Hi there, this video is going to discuss how to do a analysis of descriptive statistics, frequencies, and graphs using IBM SPSS. And I am working with what's called the General Social Survey, or the GSS, which is an available data set that you can download from the National Opinion Research Council website, NORC. Uh, you can Google that and find it pretty easily. So anyways, what I want to do is show how to do these basic descriptive analyses with both categorical and continuous variables. Okay, so categories are most of the variables in the GSS. Um, there's a few continuous variables and we'll look at one of those in particular called SEI 10, uh, which is the socioeconomic index. Uh, and then right below that is the respondent sex, which is a categorical variable, and it will it will serve our purpose for just demonstrating how to do these analyses. Okay, so I like to go to Analyze Descriptive Statistics Frequencies, and what you get uh, when you pull that up is a list of all the variables' labels. You see the I'm in variable view, and uh, you know, behind this you can see all these variables have labels. I actually like working with the variable names. They're just shorter, easier to work with. Uh, so if I right click in here I can choose to show the variable names instead. And then I can also sort them alphabetically. And that, When you're dealing with a data set that has a lot of variables that's extremely useful. <laughs> so it's like finding a needle in a haystack otherwise. Uh, so let's uh, let's take a look at the variable for sex and bring that over. And you see on the side here, we have options for statistics, charts, uh, these other three. There's not much we're going to worry about uh, formatting and other types of things aren't our main concern here. Uh, statistics give us the basic uh, measures of central tendency and dispersion, as well as different. Uh, cut points in terms of percentiles, or you, we can work with quartiles. We also have the ability to look at the distribution if we're looking at a continuous variable. But since we're, we're looking at a categorical variable, that's not going to be relevant, nor are most of these other types of uh, statistics. Uh, really, the, the mode is the only thing you can look at, um, and percentiles maybe. Right? Uh, so. What's going to be useful to us is going to be uh, the appropriate graph. And uh, within this feature, we can have a bar chart or a pie chart for categorical variables. Uh, pie charts are fine if you have a few categories. If you have a variable with a lot of categories, bar charts are a little easier to read. Um, there's only two in this one for sex, so let's use that. And then I, you know, it's usually more useful to display percentages and frequencies. Uh, when we're dealing with with these types of variables, and we'll click continue, and we have a display frequency table checked by default here. All right, so I'm going to click OK, and there's our results. Uh, just straighten this out, maximize it a little bit, so we can see it a little better. Well, there we go. And so we have uh, the the first statistics just tell us the number of cases. So within the, the general social survey sample, there are 3,940 participants, 92 did not check the respondent sex uh, question. And this is our frequency table. So we can see male, female, total. We have the number in each category. We have the percent, but this first percent column also includes the missing variables, right, which is 2.3%. So if we only wanted to talk about male and female, we'd want to look at the valid percent. All right, so that's an important thing to distinguish here right off the bat. And then the cumulative percent uh, just means we're adding these as we go down the column. There's our pie chart. We can see there are more females than males, but it doesn't have any information on it. If I double click this, it will bring up a box here. And I want to choose Elements, Show Data Labels. And that will put the percentages right on that pie chart. And then I can just close that, and it'll be there. All right, now I can, I can copy this image and bring it into a Word document. I can copy as an image, or I can copy it as a Microsoft Office graphics image or an EMF. 
Those are just different types of images. If you wanted to, you could even take a screenshot or whatever. Uh, with the table, you can copy it as an Excel worksheet, a plain text, or an image. Uh, I actually like often keeping these as images, but if you want to edit the appearance, then you're going to want to copy it as uh, plain text or Excel worksheet uh, if you're bringing this into an external document, uh, which is kind of nice when you're writing a report. Okay, so that is how we do the uh, categories, the categorical variables, the statistics, the frequency table, and a useful graph. Uh, again, we could have choose bar chart if we wanted, but pie chart conveys what we want. Okay, so back to the data. Let's now take a look at this other variable, SEI10. Okay, same steps, analyze, descriptive statistics, frequencies. I'm going to take the original variable out and bring in the one I want to look at that is continuous, which is the socioeconomic index. And this time I'm going to uncheck display frequency table. And that's because when you show a frequency table for a continuous variable, it's just a long sprawling table that shows the frequency of each and every value. And since it's continuous, there are a lot of values. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck that one. Um, but now all of these measures of central tendency and dispersion are going to be of value to us, and so is the distribution analysis. Uh, we can do quartiles if we want. Uh, and the appropriate chart for continuous variables is a histogram. And a nice feature uh, here is we can superimpose the normal curve over the histogram to help us determine if that distribution is normal. And that's an important determination if we're going to do subsequent types of analyses like correlations or regressions, because those techniques assume that our variables have a normal distribution. And we want to meet the assumptions for those. All right, so that's that's what we do. And when we're ready, we just click OK. And you'll notice no frequency table this time. Uh, but we do have a lot more in the statistics box. So we have the mean. So out of this index, the mean score was a 52.4. And we have the range down here of 83. The minimum is 10.6. And the maximum, 93.7. OK. And the standard deviation, 23.17. Uh, the variance is the square of that. And when we're looking at normality, one of the things we look at are these skewness and kurtosis variables. Uh, and the closer those are to zero, the better. So skewness, we see, is pretty small and close to zero. That's good. Kurtosis, however, negative 1.3. That's a little concerning. Uh, it's not very close to zero. And uh, we have our histogram down below. <coughs> You'll notice the histogram also shows the mean and standard deviation, as well as the sample size, uh, with complete data. All right, so, uh, so we have 3,873. Now we're actually missing 159 cases. All right, so we see this isn't a very normal distribution. There are substantial, uh, well, it seems to be trimodal, right? We have three peaks. Uh, and where the normal distribution would predict a peak, we have a lot of uh, emptiness, right? a lot of missing uh, values there. So there aren't many people in the middle of the distribution, even though that's where the mean is. The mean is somewhere about here. But we can see there's actually maybe about three different types of, or maybe even four. <laughs> so uh, this is not a very normally distributed variable. So we'd want to do something with that before we did some kind of a correlation or regression analysis. All right, so that's that's just a quick overview of doing uh, the types of analysis we're, looking, we're talking about, descriptive statistics, frequency distributions, and graphs for both categorical and continuous variables. Thank you.